quick, as we receive tonight's um, love offering, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to Mark, the fifth chapter, and then get your place in Mark, the twelfth chapter. Praise God Almighty. Hmm. I think that's why they make Catholic cathedrals so, the ceiling so high. At least you hear echoes of things. Right now, it was just like dead silence, and I was like, Father, heal my ears. God, what happened? You know, you got blind Bartimaeus, all of a sudden, I felt like deaf Demetrius. I didn't know. Anyway, nah, your mama. Okay, so Mark chapter 5 says this in verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor. I thought we were talking about uh, tithes and offerings, giving and receiving. Uh, What are we doing here with this? This is a healing scripture. Well, hold on now. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Say 12 years. That's a long time. Obviously, it's a decade and a couple of years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Say this. She got worse, wasn't getting better and spent all that she had. When you take all that you have and you can, as the responsible steward of what is entitled to you or what you're responsible for, if you take it, you can put it any arena and area you want to put it in. Sometimes you feel like I'm putting it into it because it's a need. Sometimes you put it into it because of maybe an investment. Sometimes you put it into it because of, you know, whatever. I I need to keep the lights on or whatever. I need the gas and the water and, the you know, whatever. I need to pay for my four satellite dishes on my house, you know, so I can get all the the UFCs and all the pay-per-views. Are you hearing me? It never ceased to amaze me that when me and a, a buddy of mine were in real estate and we were doing this together, it never ceased to amaze me that the places that we would see the most satellite dishes on a house were in the way, 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 low, low, low income, almost what they would call uh, war zones. It was amazing to me that they had all the money for all these dishes, but then couldn't pay for any rent. You know why it got quiet in here? I have no idea either. But anyway, so we see Mark chapter 5 here. She spent all that she had. She was all in. Say all in. But it's amazing. You can be all in with your stuff and still not get any better. You can be all in with your stuff, thinking you got a plan to increase and go higher, and yet it seems like it's doing nothing more than being drained from you. You've heard the old cliche, burning a hole in my pocket. That's usually from a person that as soon as they get money, they can't, that's just burning a hole to get out because you want to go spend it on something. Spending habits are good. This is not a class on how to uh, manage things financially. I'll just say this, though. I, I think that... Um, Who's the guy, money makeover, Dave Ramsey? I I think that he'd be pretty happy with me. But anyway, nonetheless, um, thank you, one person. But anyway, Dave Ramsey's got some good stuff, you know. He's got some good, sound, practical things. But, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, this is not one of those classes on how to financially manage your stuff other than make sure that when you're all in, make sure it's not just going all in to what the world is sucking out of you. And we'll cover that in just a second. Mark chapter 12. Here's another story of somebody who was all in. Verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury where the offering was being collected and beheld how the people, that's more than one, several, cast money into the treasury. And watch this. And many that were rich cast it in much. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw in Two mites, which equivalent to about a cent or maybe two, which make a farthing. And he called unto his disciples and said unto them, because even the disciples felt uncomfortable staying by the offering bucket. bucket. <laughs> Jesus is like, I'm going to stand by the offering bucket because I want to know who's really given out of their heart. You may not agree with that, but why else was he, you know, was going into his, uh, you know, account He wanted to also know it wasn't that I wanted all their money. If it was the case, then he would have stopped on that verse and said, many that were rich gave a lot. Say la. But they didn't. No, not in say la, like like in the Psalms. All right, anyway, I see now why Brother Hagin used to say see la. 
Selah. Because every time you say Selah, there's always somebody that goes, Allah. I'm here, praise God. He sat there to see who was bringing and opening the blessing up on themselves. So the widow comes up. You know as well as I do, much finances is way greater in the natural than a couple of mites or basically a couple cents, right? But the thing is, Jesus called his disciples over and said, this woman has given more than all of those put together. Come on. Come on. How is that possible? Because there's two areas that God is looking at when it comes to all of us sowing. Number one, it's how big is your heart? And then he measures how big is your offering. Oh, come on, somebody help me with that. So these that were given with a closed, dark heart because of their much giving thought they could open up much doors. Their heart was actually small. Therefore, their offering wasn't that big. Somebody help me. But the widow woman who came in with an open heart dealing with the same kind of issues on another side of the mountain of death. The woman with the issue of blood was facing nothing that was helping her. Everything she had, she was all in. And it was going into the world system to give her a better life. But she couldn't get any more money because she couldn't go out to work. So now everything's dried up. You see, she was all in. Say all in. But then you come over a few chapters later and you see this woman that's a widow woman who's experienced the pain of death. Even though this woman over here in Mark 5 is still alive, she is now facing imminent death if if something doesn't happen. But this woman's faced the death of losing her husband and yet she... She obviously wasn't left a huge amount of insurance when he passed. So what she had was all she had. Instead of putting it back into the world system, I'm not against you paying for something or buying something or having good stuff. Put it in proper perspective and be all in with the things of God and not the things of this world. Somebody help me with this. Say, I'm all in. in. How can you be all in? And you don't feel like you have anything to give. You always have something to give. You know how I know? Because he gives seed to the. I said he gives seed to the. How many sowers we have in here? I think we have more people in the the body of Christ that are so what than sowers. Think about this. I can tell you personally. That what we have experienced in our life, there are people in here that are fighting this message. There are people watching that are fighting this message. There are people that are watching at a later time that are fighting this message. And you have to ask yourself, why would you be fighting a message when you haven't been in the shoes where we have, where they've come to collect our car, where we face foreclosure twice, when we didn't know when the next meal was literally going to come up, when we were praying about God, is it your will for us to go and file bankruptcy? I'm trying to help you. When we all of a sudden we're saying we shouldn't even try for a third one because of what it's going to cost us. You don't even want to hear about that story. You do good. Watch this now. We had started sowing and tithing like nobody's business. We didn't just do it half-heartedly. We were all in. Say, I'm all in. in. So then when we started uh, trying to have our third one, we were like, we don't care, boy or girl, but we will assign the proper gender to it. God, give us Catholic cathedral ceilings. Here's what happens. We're on the road ministering in a little town in Kansas. And right in the middle of the revival, we miscarried. So we had to still get up there, love people, which we do, preach to people like we do, as if nothing had happened. We were all in. We weren't seeing a whole lot of results up front at first. I mean, we go some some of these places, and, and to you, you'd be like, oh, that's wonderful. That's great. You, you have no idea what the expenses were to travel. And then they'd look at you, and you're sitting there thinking to yourself, really? 
This is why Brother Hagin said that every pastor should travel and every traveling minister should have a season of pastoring so that we all understand. That's why everybody that comes through these doors and ministers here from out of state, we take care of them and we bless them. Amen. I like what one of the pastors we were under used to do. He used to have an account where he set money aside so that all those uh, expenses were taken care of. So when God said, call them and have them in, all of the expenses were taken care of. All of a sudden, then if they take a love offering, they added to it that's how it should be there is not one person in here uh or one person that we've had in here to minister we we didn't add to the offering out of our own and out of the church we just added more to it on top of their expenses why because we're givers and we know what it was like to have that miscarriage in the midst of going are you kidding me We actually started talking ourselves into thinking that maybe it was God's will that we did not have any more children. And so we decided, no, we're all in. So we tried again, another miscarriage. Hmm, Now I'm getting mad. Now I'm calling for Rambo testosterone. You don't want to hear that, or maybe you do. I hope this is a good bedtime story for y'all. You enjoying it? Please don't wake your neighbor next to you, whatever you do. If they're snoring, just let them know. Shut up, 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 up. But then, at Rama, when we were on staff there, great church, great school, great pastors, here we are, we're all of a sudden with child. And we tell Pastor Hagen, we're pregnant. And he looks at us and he goes, you're pregnant now? <laughs> I'm like, yes, sir. So right in the middle of all of this, my wife's walking around, it's like, hey, hey. You know, and here we are having a successful carriage, no miscarriage. Amen. But what's amazing is, is during all of this, it came to us, somebody said out of the blue, why don't you, because we've been sowing, we've been tithing, we've been sowing big for us, you know, with our heart and what we had. And, and all of a sudden, we're, we started looking at, we like, we really don't have insurance to cover the birth of Cassidy. So all of a sudden, somebody said, do you have Indian in you? And she goes, yeah. And so we just did some stateside uh, investigation, if you will. And the next thing you know is because this woman has a, a certain percentage of Cherokee in her, we were able to have that white girl free of charge. I was so excited. I kept asking them. I said, now... We don't owe you anything. No, we'd ask her uh, OBGESPN doctor. We'd ask her. We'd say, now, do we owe you anything? No, nope, the state's covered it all. I said, how come? Because she's Indian. And I said, that's wonderful. Oh, and I'm sorry. I apologize if I've offended you. Anyway, listen, we were so thankful. We were like, praise God. Cassidy came full term, eight pounds seven ounces of chunk came up out of her and this is the first thing we heard when she was born the nurse said uh or was it the the nurse one of the nurses helping the doctor said whoa well she's all there i don't know if you stepped on a scale lately honey but listen now so anyway, uh, this was crazy. So they, you know, they, they put uh, the, the little Cassidy in my arms and everything, and I got to cut the umbilical cord, which, it, you know, happens so fast, you know, and you're just like, man, I hope I didn't cut a finger. I hope I did the right thing. I'm just like, you know. And so anyway, I'm holding her, and I, I'm just looking down at her, and I said, I'm your dad. And she looked up at me and stopped crying. And then started to scream her head off. (laughs) No, she didn't. She didn't. But this is what's weird is all of a sudden I started hearing a lot of motion and commotion going on in the room while I'm holding the little baby. And and, and the the nurses came up and said, here, we're going to take her. We're going to clean her off and all of this. And I said, okay, same room, probably from here to the wall. And and I'm looking around. Everybody's kind of scurrying but quiet. And I'm looking over at my wife and her eyes are kind of rolling back in her head a little bit and everything and I said I know she just gave birth but you know I I didn't know and then um they're scurrying the nurses said, get the doctor back in here she's she hasn't stopped bleeding get the doctor in here now 
And I'm, I'm thinking, that's not good when they're freaking out. You know when you're flying an airplane and you're always looking at the, the, the flight attendants whenever you hit this bump and everything crazy, you look at them to see if everything's okay? Well, if they're doing this, the, you know, grab your knees, put your head down, you know, do some, grab the oxygen mask. But anyway, so I'm looking and they're scurrying around. Now they start hitting these buzzers and stuff to get her back in and she comes rushing in and, and my wife's looking at me going, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I said this, I grabbed her hand and I said, everything is going to be just fine in the name of Jesus. And I'm saying, I command that blood to stop right now. The doctor came in, running in. What's going on? Give me the stats. They're saying all the stats and all this talk. And then, you know, goes to check for any bleeding. And she's looking at and she said, I don't understand. It, it, everything stopped. It's perfectly normal. And I said, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what happens. You don't think that, that you don't get those kind of blessings and those kind of results because of tithing and giving of your money? You can't pay for a healing. You can't pay for a miracle. You can't pay for a blessing. You can't pay for these results. That's where the heart is different. But when you're all in and you're given because it's covenant and it's a sign of your heart, then God's heart's all in back to you. Say, I'm all in. Woo! I come against debt in this house. I rebuke all debt, command it to be paid for and paid off quickly in Jesus' name. I command every need to be met in abundance in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, that this church is all in for the things of God and the kingdom of God. I thank you in the mighty matchless name of Jesus for an abundance to come to each and every single one of them. Promotion coming, open doors happening. I give you the glory. Satan, you're bound in Jesus' name. Woo, hallelujah. So we thank you right now, God, that this year will be a greater year than even last year. And if your first thought was COVID, I'm going to have you think a little higher. The bubonic plague was John G. Lake's COVID-19. It's amazing. Tuberculosis was the COVID-19 of Brother Hagen's day. I mean, we can go on and on. I'm thankful they're trying to find a vaccination. I'm thankful they're being proactive. But the problem is, is we, don't, we haven't had for years any kind of vaccine to help with cancer. The real flu. No, you don't want to hear any of this. But now we're pushing this, so praise the Lord. Again, COVID-19, if you're taking notes, are the 19 pounds that you gained during pandemic lockdown. Okay, we're going to... How crazy. Your son's name is Maui Demetrius, and I just called out Demetrius earlier. That's crazy. Not as a word of knowledge, but just somehow in the flow. All uh, right, so Sylvia. Is that Sylvia's mom? Sylvia Mum, okay? Her daughter Caroline's very sick with a fever that won't go down. It will now. Also pray for spiritual condition. It's bad. I believe that's going to change. And her son Maui Demetrius Zeus. Man. I mean, which one of those names do you pick to go by? They're all sweet. So you just go by them all. My name is Maui Demetrius Zeus. And I attend the Catholic Church with the small ceilings. He's also been sick with a fever. He's autistic. We're going to pray that that also stops. We command it to stop. And we'll also pray for the spiritual condition there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Sylvia Mum right to you now and her daughter Caroline, who's been sick with a fever. We command that fever to be broken this moment right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we command it to cease and desist and to go down to normal in the name of Jesus. We also break that fever over Maui, Demetrius, Zeus. We command that to break now and to go down. We command your body to function perfectly now in the way that Jesus commanded it and expe expected it to function in Jesus' name. And their spiritual condition, Lord, I pray that the eyes of their understanding are enlightened, that they know what is the hope, the depth, the length, the breadth, and the height of the call of God that is on their life, that they 
they will hunger and thirst after the things of God and won't be able to get away from it in Jesus' mighty name. Well, let's rejoice and thank God that the fevers are broken now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name forevermore. Praise God. Well, there are offering envelopes in the back of the seats. If you need an offering envelope, if you're giving cash, we're working furiously. Not, I'm not furious, but Amy is. She's working furiously. We've been dealing with her anger issues. But she's getting these letters together. They will be out, and we believe God, before the end of the month. We're trying to do that as quickly as we can. And then also, if you are given by way of cash or check, take the envelope. We can get your information that way. Put it on the envelope. Fill it out. Not in tongues, so we don't have to have an interpretation of what. You'd be amazed at some people. You're looking at some stuff, and you're like, my goodness. They wrote it half in Russian and half in English. So anyway, but anyway, write it down uh, uh, you know, legibly. That's the word I was looking for, legibly. If you're making out a check, Life Revolution Church. If you're filling out credit card information, there's a way to do that on the envelope as well. Uh, all of it's secretive. It's all safe. It's all PCI compliant, personal credit information compliance. We are. We have to pass a rigorous test every single year, which we do and have now for years. So it's good. It's good. It's good. We take care of you. We, we thank God for every one of you you in here and those that are giving by way of uh, watching online you can do hashtag donate if you're watching on Facebook hashtag donate that symbol write the word donate and then put the numerical value of what you want to sow and good world who we're in partnership with will take care of you and then also if you're uh, giving by way of cash app you can do it through the cash tag, which is the dollar sign, and then Life Revolution, one word, and you can give that way. That's one avenue, cash app, Life Revolution. And then there's another way. You can text to give, 888-364-4483. Text the word Life Rev. And then we're going to give you another opportunity online. You can give through the liferevolution.church website or the Life Revolution Church app. The app's the easiest. Go and download it. I-O-S. Go to the Apple Store. Download it. Android. <laughs> download it at Google Play. So praise God. Please tell your face you're excited. Please tell your mouth you're ecstatic. Because God loves and takes pleasure in a cheerful giver. You know that thing where it says in 2 Corinthians 9, he gives seed to the sower. You all read that before? Watch this. Start asking him this year for crazy amounts of seed to sow. Start it out with your faith. I, I know uh, brother, brother Chris might remember this, uh, but I, I wore that tape out when Brother Mark Brzee, Pastor Mark Brzee, first put out when he was a traveling ministry. I'd actually worked for their ministry as a volunteer when I was going to school at Rama, And he had this thing, Faith for Socks, a message called Faith for Socks. And he said, it's amazing how many people have faith for all these fancy vehicles, but they can't even call in any socks. So somewhere down the line, you got to be realistic. If you can believe God to bring in an extra $100 that you won't eat, he'll make sure you get it. And just start increasing your faith with seed to sow. Because why? God gives seed to the sower. Say, I am a sower. I am a sower. Praise the Lord. So you can give that way through the app, website, text to give, cash app. Man, we make it so easy to get blessed in here. So what else? Anything else? We got it all. That's it, right? Are y'all ready to sow big? Yes. Come on now. Let's sow big. Let's say I'm all in. I'm all in. And I'm giving, you my best, God. I'm giving you my best, God. Hallelujah. So let's lift our offering to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you that as we give, it shall be given back unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give back mightily unto us. I command all debt to be canceled, forgiven, and paid off quickly in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the harvest. I thank you that it's coming in. Oh, just like we said, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. I thank you, Lord, it's raining on us. It's raining blessing upon us. It's raining abundance on us. 
us. Satan, take your hands off this seed, off this offering, and off their harvest. We break your power. Angels of God, go forth and cause that harvest to come in from the north, south, east, and west. Let it overtake, overwhelm, and overflow each and every giver in this house. And I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty, matchless name. If you agree with that, shout amen. Amen. Whoa! Testimonies are coming!